Hello, my friends from Nick Universe at American Dream Mall here in East Rutherford, New Jersey, uh, where the 2026 World Cup finals are going to be, apparently. Either way, you might have noticed Shell Razor and Sandys were absent from the opening montage there, and that's because they're not operating. I foolishly forgot to check their maintenance schedule, which is always a good idea if you're visiting here, because this is a tough park to get all five credits here in one go. There's usually something that's down. So yeah, if you're ever coming out here, definitely check the maintenance schedule. At least they have it on their website. But anyway, let's do a lap. It's been a while since I've been here and I invite you to come along. Let's go. So after making my way down the escalator, which it's actually a pretty cool view, seeing like a panorama of the park, they have added this arcade here, which actually, this is where the lockers used to be and they had whole bays of them. I wonder if those are nearby. Still walking by the arcade here. They do have all of the usual suspects here. Very much, oh hey, look at these guys. They're getting their live action remake soon. Oh boy, I hope that works out. But yeah, it's all the typical stuff either to win tickets or like simulators of some kind or another. So that's where the arcade is. And this is where they put the lockers now next to, I believe this is Jumping Genies hidden in there. And I'm not sure where you're actually paying for these because they still have the barcode that you need to scan. I remember having a heck of a time with that uh, the last time I was here. So I went and asked somebody at the arcade and you can get a wristband up where they're selling the main tickets and stuff, which if you're bringing like your family and stuff, it's kind of a hassle to come down, realize you need a locker and then to head back up, isn't it? But I guess you're not really using a locker uh, uh, unless you're riding coasters and I don't know. Either way, that brings me to another good point is that about a year ago they switched to like not requiring a ticket for entry and just for the rides. So that means you can either just come in with the whole family and pay for a day ticket for whatever person in your party is riding, or you can pay in a points pass that they have here for something like Shell Razor. I'm looking for a sign that says how many points it is. There it is. Sadly, it's closed, and of course Squidward is the one to inform us about that. However, it is six points, and I checked on the app, and that is $11.99. That's right, imagine having to pay $11.99 just to get onto Shell Razor, and I kind of average, because if you buy more points at once, obviously you get a bit of a discount, but the lowest it goes is like $1.90 per point. So if you're coming here just to go on ride after ride, and you're planning on spending more than like three rides here, like. Just going for the uh, day ticket, which I think at the moment is $79.99, depending on what day of the week you come, is just worth it. And I should also mention that the point pass is blocked out on Saturdays, like full on. And I think also on like holidays and other blackout dates that may come up, you can't use the points pass. Well, at least Sandy is a little nicer about telling us that the ride is closed. Squidward over there was just like, give me six points. It is sometimes kind of crazy to think that this world record holder for the steepest drop is just hanging out here in this mall at Nick Universe. And sadly, we don't get to see it running as often as I think most of us hoped. Because I had personally been waiting for a moment where at least most of the roller coasters were open, but sadly, between Shell Razor and Sandy's, that just never happened. And of course I come on the day when both of them aren't operating. Just passing by the Reptar Carousel, gotta shout it out. Probably one of my favorite things here that isn't a roller coaster. I've been trying to play a little bit of Spot the Difference. I can't remember if this was here. I don't recall those cupcakes back there being a thing. And then there's like a Paw Patrol ride that's here. And then speaking of Paw Patrol, they still do character meet and greets, even though there is no general admission that you can pay here. I also did notice that they added a lot more food around here. So I saw like snack type of things, popcorn, churros, stuff like that. So not meal meals. I remember they used to have like grab and go stuff. And it was not the most exciting thing. And I see Jumping Jellyfish is still operating nicely. It looks great. And my favorite thing ever is still how the operator's booth works. Or how it looks, I should say. If you look at it back there. Oh, wow. This looks really cool with the... Uh, <laughs> now, I haven't been in here with this lens. It is making a really crazy noise, though. It's kind of doomy. But anyway, that is where the operator goes. And just past Jumping Jellyfish, you can see it's much darker back here. Oh, there goes Krang's. Woo, it is so much darker back here. As I've been walking around and looking at all the different ride signs, 
most of the kitty rides are three points and everything else is six points. So anything that could be considered extreme, the roller coasters and like Ang's gliders and the Krang ride, all of that stuff is six points, which means you'd be paying about $12 to go on it if you're doing the points pass. So even if you're doing like three or four rides, it makes sense to just get the general admission. <laughs> there goes Ang's gliders. I really like that ride, although I feel like it would have been more appropriate to have that one style flat ride where you control the spinning. Either way though, this is uh, it's a lot of fun. I just can't believe they're, the point system's $12. I'm curious how long this cycle is. It seems like it's going on almost like 45 seconds so far. Yeah, that was about 45 seconds cycle time, so 12 bucks for 45 seconds of some flipping. I don't know if the value is there. Also, they blast the music in here, which is wild to me. Oh, Adam Smasher's got a Squidward in front of it. No bueno. This ride is actually a lot of fun. It's crazy. Uh, I probably have it in one of my previous vlogs from visiting here. But also, this this lighting is just... What a nightmare. Um, Sandy's Blast and Bronco also down during my visit here. What a shame. This actually, unrelated to riding this coaster, but I, <laughs> I ended up riding this coaster just before I ended up going in for emergency open heart surgery. I have not ridden it since, but it, it's unrelated that I ended up going for surgery because it was not due to this. It was a totally unrelated thing. But I don't see this operate too often or see people come, like on my social media going on it or anything. I don't know. If you've been on this, let me know what your thoughts are. I thought this was a pretty cool coaster. Invader Zim's Flip and Spin of Doom. Whatever became of that ride? I feel like I remember it was like under here somewhere for some reason. It's tucked away way back there. I don't know if the focus will grab it. I don't know if you can see it way back there. All the way against the wall, there was another ride, an Invader Zim ride. Odd that they have the sign here. Anyway, just wanted to show the, off the sign here. They do have some pretty good ride signs here at this park. Yeah, that's cool. But, uh... This, I don't know if you guys remember, but during the pandemic and stuff, this was very much online and for sale for, like, not much. Like, if I was a little wealthier, if the channel was a little bigger, I would have been super tempted to just buy this and just invite people to come come enjoy. Uh, and there's Olmec. How many of you guys watch Legends of the Hidden Temple? I wonder. Do they even have... Oh, I thought they'd have the teams on here or something. Very elaborate, very cool. I wonder if they built this themselves or if they scavenged that from like Nickelodeon Studios at Universal or something. But yeah, at some point this was like fully functional and stuff. I think, I don't know if this is actually operating to be honest. Like they have all the gear and all the equipment but I don't see anybody here. Might be an upcharge for all I know. Don't wanna know how many points it is. Anyway, let's move on. Now I'm looking here at Timmy's Half Pipe Havoc and I, Kind of was hoping that I would see this operate while I've been here, but I've been waiting for, I guess, ever since I started talking about Jimmy Neutron, keeping an eye on this, but for a Sunday afternoon, it is real quiet, so dispatches are irregular. All the kiddie rides, however, they're getting plenty of attention. I think that's probably working in this park's favor. So it looks like Skyline Scream is down, but one thing, if you aren't aware, that I want to show you is that all the way up there, there's actually windows where you can get a pretty good view of the New York City skyline right before you start dropping. And I believe this one had a pretty cool drop sequence as well. Uh, for a drop ride, it's pretty solid. Now I am going to start getting on some of these rides soon, but I want to point out there's like retail spaces that have not been utilized yet. So there's this. This sign has been here for, I, I guess, like three years, three and a half. And then what looks like it was supposed to be like a kitchen or something like that over here has not been utilized. What is surprising though, and I don't believe I can go up there, it's blocked off, there's like birthday party spaces up there. So I just got to ride a few of the coasters. Slime Streak still very much hurts the knees. It's a little rattly in certain parts, but it's a lot of fun to go around the park, right? Uh, Sh Shredder spun a bit. It was good. It's still, it's like Pandemonium and all those other Gerslauer spinners. It's, it's fun. It fits well here. I should say that much. And then Half Pipe Havoc. I wrote it by myself. Definitely ask. There's one or the other. There's two different, you know, uh, boards that you can get on. 
and one of them spins a little bit more than the other. So definitely ask the operator, because they can tune them differently, uh, which one is spinning more, and get on that one for sure. I see Patrick is currently meeting and greeting, so I'm going to go see if I can say hi to him, maybe ask him what his favorite coaster is, and then we're going to call this one. Patrick, you are my favorite Super Bowl commentator, and I didn't know you were so knowledgeable about football. That was amazing. Now, I wanted to ask you an important question, and I'm going to try to guess. What is your favorite roller coaster here? Is it Shell Razor? No. Is it Half Pipe Havoc? Is it Sandy's? Yeah, it's Sandy's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. You like going forward and backward? Well, it's so awesome to see you, and I hope to, hopefully I'll run into you again, all right? <laughs> Have a great day. Have a great day. All right, I don't know why I always turn on, like, the baby voice, because he's they're, like, cutified or whatever, and you start talking, like, a little more with your voice elevated, and you drop all the bass of your voice. I don't know why. I think it's something that happens naturally to humans when they see cute things, and I couldn't help it myself. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys saw the Nickelodeon Super Bowl stuff that happened, but it was so unhinged. It was probably my, one of my favorite things that I've seen in a long time. But I think that's going to do it for me here at Nick Universe. Definitely be back once Sandy's and Shell Razor are reopened. But anyway, for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye.